Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. It is wonderful to be back. Uh, some of you know I was in New York this last week, um, and I was there for a conference, and I learned a number of things when I was there. Um, number one, I am going to give a tremendous amount of respect to our preschool, first grade, and second grade teachers who teach all of our students how to write the letters because that's what I learned for the last week again, and it was really hard. <laughs> um, I was learning how to actually write a get, to be a sofer, to be a scribe, and writing the letters with a quill, um, learning that all over again when I thought, oh, I've been writing these Hebrew letters for a long time, no problem. I had to start literally from square one and learn all over again. So that's number one. But number two, what I learned when I was in New York in all of this process is how important names are. Names are incredibly important. And it's not just the name that we were given, right? A little bit later on, Ariella is going to be called up to the Torah. And she's going to be called up by her Hebrew name. It's a name she was given. But it's also the names that we're known by, right? So Rabbi Ern called Ariella Ari. A lot of people call her Ari. So is that her name? What does it mean when we call Ariella Ariella? And what does it mean when we call Ariella Ari? There's, there's an intentionality behind these names. There's an intentionality behind how we're known and what we're called. And that recognition, I think, lifts the first part of this Torah portion up to utmost importance. Let's look on page 351 in the Chumashim, in the red, uh, I can't say red books anymore because they're all red. Again. In the larger red books, in the Eitz Chaim Chumashim. <laughs> The beginning of our portion that we're going to hear, right? God said to Moses, I am Adonai. I am God. And I appeared to Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as El Shaddai. But I did not make myself known to them by my name, yod heh vav -Heh Adonai. What's being said here, right? God is telling Moses, I had a different name for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob than I have for you. And I want to ask the question today, and I want us to think about, well, <laughs> to quote a great author, what's in a name, right? What's in a name? Why, what is the difference between these names, and why is God making this moment such an important one. What do we think? What's in a name? Say it again. Uniqueness, right? There's a unique way of, of referring to you. And even if somebody, even if somebody um, has the same name, right? There's ways that we identify who we're actually talking about. In the modern world, we use last names. In the Torah, you know, when we are called up to the Torah, we use our parents' names. Good. What else? Marge. Uh, well, you know, Good. So sometimes we're the ones that change our name. Sometimes other people change our name, right? If you go to the, if, you, if you're in the, in, in the mili in any military, but especially the Israeli military, you're going to get a nickname, right? And that's usually what other people call you. But sometimes we change our name. And maybe it's how we see ourselves. Maybe we've grown up. We know some people, um, you know, Debbie and I have, uh, have a friend who we know as Danny, but now, as an adult and as a professional, he goes by Dan, right? Because Danny, uh, that's what we, 
it's, it's a kid's name. It's a kid's name. Deb? Right. Good. So the names that we use, we use as at different times, depending on what we're doing, right? So, you know, I don't, you only call me Rabbi Kornberg when you're trying to catch my attention in a room and I'm not listening, <laughs> right? And then all of a sudden I'll hear Debbie say Rabbi Kornberg and I'm like, That's, it's so, it's so uh, uh, jarring, right? But otherwise, Right, to you, I'm David. To other people, I'm Rabbi Kornberg. To, right, and different, you know, in, in the police, I'm chaplain. There's a title that's there, right? There's, there's titles and names give us our roles sometimes. Okay, I saw, yes. In Judaism, we often give our children names, but we don't notice the character traits. Nice. Nice. Excellent. Excellent. In Judaism, right, we give names to connect ourselves back to other people. It's not just to say you're unique. It's actually the opposite sometimes. To say we hope that you have the same traits as this other person that I loved or that was generations beforehand, that we want to maintain that connection. So names create a uniqueness, but they also create a connection. They do both. <laughs> but uh, just kind of extend, extending on that concept, you know, his relationship to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were going to be different than his relationship to Moses. And Jose Bate is, uh, my understanding is a concept, it indicates past, present, and future. Good. Good. How, how God is choosing to call God's self here is indicative of not only the relationship and not only the role, but the name actually means something in and of itself. And yud heh vav heh, there is a tradition, which we'll, I'll read in, in a second or two, that talks about yud heh vav heh has all the letters for hayah yeh, past, present, and future, was, is, will be. It's that as attribute of God, right? Whereas El Shaddai... Um, is actually a very different name, which we'll hear about in a second of where that comes from. Anybody else before we get into some of these texts? Karina. Who they are. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a spiritual energy, right? Is, is what Karina is saying in names. And when we pass down those names, we pass down that spiritual energy. By the way, it's not something that we do that often in the conservative movement. In the orthodox movement, it's actually quite more common that we change a name or we add a name when somebody is ill. Right? And we add very often, we'll add for men, we'll add the name Chaim, right? Life, or the, one of those sorts of names that, that lifts up, that brings that spiritual energy of what that name means into that person. Good, please. Yes. <laughs> What do you, say it again, the first verse four. Well, but 
I, I actually don't think that those verses are contradictory. I actually says, I actually think what it says is that name El Shaddai was about establishing the covenant. This name now, Adonai, is going to be about something totally different. It's going to be about building a relationship with the community of Israel, with the people of Israel, as opposed to with individuals. That's one of the ways that I see it, right? Is that El Shaddai was the name that was used when God was having these individual relationships. But now, and, and, and if we look back actually to, to chapter 3, this is a conclusion of a conversation that Moses and God had because when Moses was at the burning bush and God said, okay, I'm going to send you, they're going to say that he said, Moses said to God, well, what's your name? What, what should I, who should I tell them is sending me? And we have this cryptic, eh, yeah, I share, eh, yeah, I will be that which I will be, right? And that's the beginning of this changing of the name. And it's about the community now, as opposed to the individuals, the nature of our relationship with God is changing from this familial relationship, tribal relationship to peoplehood, to a much different relationship that we have. And just as we've said, the name change will allow that to happen or might allow that to happen. So a couple of sources to think about as we look at these names. Um, Ovadia ben Yaakov Sforno, one of our commentators, actually says very clearly, a name describes the indiv individual features of a person. Right? You can learn about a person through their name. And these individual features are the essential reasons for the actions of a person. He says that the name we give somebody can actually focus their actions. Right? That's why. That's why we name after people who, who, who are great role models. We want to help our children focus their actions to become like that person. And it says the people we're going to ask are going to ask, um, what is the manner of action of God whose messenger you claim to be? Right? What is... You, you are God's messenger. Well, by the name of God, I'm going to learn something about you. What name are, is God going to be called when God sent you to free us? And so... I'm going to just jump ahead here for a second. Um, the second source I want to bring is from Exodus Rabbah, and this talks about the names themselves. God said to Moshe, you wish to know my name, right? You want to know who I am? This is actually referring back to chapter three. I'm called according to my deeds. God said, depending on what I'm doing, my name is going to change. Sometimes I'm called El Shaddai. Tzvaot, Elohim, or yud heh vav -Hey, right? When, I'm, when I judge creations, I'm called Elohim. That is the, the name of judgment. When I'm waging war against the wicked, I am called Tzvaot, which comes from the same Hebrew word as Tzava, army. When I suspend punishment for a person's sins, I am called El Shaddai which I actually love thinking back to all these sins that the patriarchs did, that God had to say, okay, you guys are learning. Let's figure this out. I'm going to be El Shaddai. I'm going to, I'm going to suspend punishment for all of that. And when I'm merciful towards my world, I am called yud heh vav -Hey. So again, we see this idea of God as an individual God, as El Shaddai, and God as a communal world God in yud heh vav -Hey. What Rabbi Arthur Waskow actually reminds us is for as much as the Torah is given through yud heh vav -Hey, through this name that Moses now knows, right? What's the problem? with the name yud heh vav -Hey. It's the only name of God we can't pronounce. We can't pronounce it. 
We can pronounce El Shaddai, we can pronounce Elohim, Adonai Tzvaot, all of these different sorts of things. We can say the word, we can pronounce it, we know exactly how it's pronounced and how it's said. And yet, this name that Moses is getting is actually, and the name that we're going to connect through Torah, is actually the unpronounceable name. What do you think that means? What does it mean that we as a community, God is choosing to give us a name that ultimately is unpronounceable as an individual? The only time, by the way, it's pronounced is Yom Kippur by the high priest in the Holy of Holies. That's it. It's the only time it's ever pronounced. So this is a name that is not pronounceable. That we shouldn't pronounce. And yet, this is the name that God is choosing to give us here. Deb? The I like that. I like that. It, it, represents, it represents, I mean, one of the names of God, one of the descriptions of God is the Ein Sof, right? Is the infinite, right? And, and I think what you're saying is yud heh vav actually represents that aspect, the infinite, the, 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 the part of God that we as finite creatures are never going to truly be able to completely comprehend and understand. And yet that's part of our relationship. If we're talking about God as God of the world, God as, as giver of Torah, there's a distance there. There's a little bit there that keeps us separate. Anybody else? What might it mean? Yes. So, so it... At a certain point in time, when we're trying to describe human beings, we can get a good picture of that. But when we try to do that to God, it's impossible. And therefore, this name represents that impossibility. I'm going to give one more option or one more th thought for us to think about, and then we'll go to the Torah reading itself. Up to this point in time, we have interacted with God as individuals. Every patriarch has their own relationship with God, and it's been an individual one-on-one -on -one relationship. Now we're making the switch. We're making the switch to us as a people. And yes, Moses is the intermediary here, but maybe what this is saying to us is that in order to discover God, in order to find God, we actually have to go to other people. We have to work with each other as a community to create that relationship, as opposed to saying, I don't need community, I don't need anybody else, I can have my relationship with God. And I think that's true, by the way. I think we can each have an individual relationship with God. But a full Jewish relationship with God is a communal relationship with God. It's about being part of a group, all of whom are struggling, all of whom bring their own perspective and their own facets and their own ideas to then create a better, more clear picture of yud heh vav -Hey, which is unpronounceable and unconceivable in terms of the way we do that. And so we work together. And that's what God is saying here to Moses. I'm sending you to be part of this community. Tell them that I am Adonai, I'm yud heh vav -Hey, and they're going to have to now work together through each other, through Torah, through you, to figure out what this relationship is going to be. It's not going to be about every individual anymore. It's going to be about coming together. It's a powerful, powerful idea. And I think we need to understand the rest of Exodus and the rest of our Torah through that lens. That's the shift. It's a new beginning. New names are new beginnings. And this is a new beginning for the people of Israel in their relationship with God. Shabbat shalom.